In today's news, Wade Smith is acting FIA director. Weekend bar shooting leaves one injured, one dead, and another injured in marine accident near Guana Island. John Samuel to head BVI Ports Authority, several earthquakes, jolt Puerto Rico, and Iran and U.S. clash. These and more stories when 284 News returns. Is business slow? Cash flow down? Hosting an upcoming event? We can help. Advertise with 284 Media and take your business or event to the next level by enhancing your present marketing and messaging strategies. Allow our team of experts to create a personalized ad that sets your business apart from all the rest. This could be your business or event. So, what are you waiting for? Contact our marketing team at 284media at cctbvi.com. Advertising with us works. When you need to stay connected with friends and families at home or abroad, the best choice for you is Freedom. CCT Freedom. With the lowest rates in the market, our Freedom plan gives you unlimited calls and texting. Plus, our Freedom One package includes 10 gigabits of super fast unlimited LTE data and unlimited calls to the BVI, USA, USVI, Canada, Puerto Rico, and UK lines. Why pay for overages when you can enjoy CCT Freedom? Stop by at one of our stores today and speak with one of our representatives to find out more about our CCT Freedom packages. Welcome, everybody. It's Monday, January 6, 2020. I'm Ron Grant. And I am Javon Wilson. Lots to get Indeed. into today uh, from local news, regional, and in international. on the international scene as well. So let's get right into it. Topping our newscast today, Wade Smith, a former Commissioner of Customs and 5th District Progressive Virgin Islands Movement candidate, has been confirmed as the Acting Director of the Financial Investigation Agency. Mr. Errol George, a long-standing director of the agency, is presently away on study leave. Smith's role as the Acting Director of Financial Investigation investigation agency was confirmed during the recently held Standing Finance Committee meeting, which took place between November 20th to 29th, 2019, at the Office of the House of Assembly in Rotown, Tortola. Additionally, like many other statutory organizations across the territory, the FIA may be contending with limited resources to carry out its 2020 mandate. Based on information received during the Standing Finance Committee report, the Financial Investigation Agency will seek to have certain offenses in its act and other related laws that cover matters that fall in the responsibility of the agency. The report detailed, and I quote, there is an option to impose an administrative penalty as opposed to penalties being purely criminal as it stands because the penalties of the offenses of the FIU are criminal, all matters have to be referred to the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions. With aim of improving money laundering enforcement, the unit also plans to do more uh, investigations with other law enforcement agencies such as the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force and HM Customs as the FIA possesses the technical expertise in money laundering and terrorist financing. It is said that Criminal Conduct Act of 1997 also gives the director and investigation the powers to that of a police officer. The report also uncovered a 57% increase in suspicious activity reports. However, the agency was only able to analyze less than 4% of the SARs because of limited resources. The report further outlined that, and I quote, the funds are limited and therefore the agency is left to rely on other agencies for support with specialized training with the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force and HM Customs rather than the costly sentiments of the agency. The FIA entered a $2.4 million budget, noting that it is needed in order to make sure that it runs at its full capacity and to make sure that the exercise is completed at a national standard. However, it was only granted $1.6 million amidst concerns that the amount does not allow the agency to meet its mandate in annual expenditures. After concerns were raised by opposition members, Honorable Julian Fraser R.A. and Honorable Mark Vantepool, on the limited budget, Premier and Minister of Finance, the Honorable Andrew A. Foy, promised to do his best to make sure the agency's requested budget was revisited. The opposition members stated that for such an important agency, the monies should be allocated. Jovan, a very interesting story here where we see, just like other statutory bodies, uh, there seems to be not enough uh, funds to facilitate what they, what they need. But what I found very interesting in these statistics where it says 57% of the report came in and they were only able, so out of 57%, they were only able to look at 4%. That is a drastic, um, I mean, 
literally you're telling us that you're only able to look at that amount of uh, reports, which you know speaks that that agency is really not being able to fulfill their mandate, which is sad. It's sad and, and big responsibilities for yes. Mr. Uh, Wade Smith as he steps into in, into this new capacity. Mm -hmm. We're all aware of the financial discrepancies we've been able to unearth over the last couple of years, especially. And like uh, Honorable Julian Fraze, Honorable Marfant, who rightfully said, this is one that definitely needs, needs the attention the funding, yeah. um, as we move forward, as we try to get into the loan guarantees and we're building the BVI. We have to ensure that we have financial transparency Indeed. and that uh, penalties are allotted accordingly. So we just have to wish him all the best. Big shoes to fill. We and do trust wish him all the best. that the Premier will do like he yeah. said, revisit it if he can. Um, or again, at, at least along those lines. And moving right along on the lines of appointments, while it is yet to be confirmed, Mr. John Samuel has been tipped as the new managing director of the BVI Port Authority. Mr. Samuels, who currently serves as the chairman of HLSCC's Board of Governors, has had a healthy career and many are seemingly very happy with the rumored appointment. John served as the director of the Virgin Islands Shipping Registry for a number of years. During his tenure there, he was responsible for the administration of establishment, operation, and development of the Virgin Islands Shipping Registry, and also managed the budgets of the department. Within his capacity of public service, he also served as a former acting permanent secretary in the then Ministry of Communications and Works. Now, Ron, academically, uh, he's well achieved as oh, yeah. well. He has a bachelor's and a master's degree and also a wealth of experience in the marine and shipping sectors. Now, in June of last year, Mr. Samuel was appointed as chairman of the HLSCC Board of Governors. The Minister of Education, Natalia Whitley, had expressed his confidence in John's new role, saying, quote, As a former permanent secretary in the then Ministry of Communications and Works, as the owner of the Auto Spot, as well as Joyce and Maritime Training and Consultants, he is the perfect person to help the college bolster its offerings in areas critical to the local job market. End of quote. He also entered the 2019 political race. Many of us remember that, of course, yes. rising up as, as uh, a strong contender against uh, Coming incumbent. Coming very close. Absolutely. Incumbent, uh, Miss Honorable Alvaro Maduro Keynes, of course, representative for the 6th District. Uh, Tweet for Media, of course, tried to reach out to the chairman of the BVI Port Authority, Mr. Nathaniel Isaacs, who respect, who's respectfully um, mm -hmm. declined to comment. We also made efforts to reach out to Mr. John Samuels himself, but up to press time, uh, unfortunately, he was unreachable. Nevertheless, he is touted to become the port's new managing director, succeeding St. Lucia National, Mr. Linius Lender. Lender was appointed managing director of the BVI Port Authority and started working officially on Monday, September 3rd in 2018 on a two-year contract. Now, the contract, because of this situation, will now be terminated eight months short of the initial agreement. Now, based on the fact, Ron, that we're not privy to that contract, Correct. we don't know what the details of the contract are. We don't even know, um, we're not even sure if, you know, he'll be paid for the remaining of those months, uh, maybe there was a no, no exit clause mm -hmm. in, in, in the contract, so we can't be sure about that. But viewers surely will be uh, bringing you and the details as they arise. It is, if it is indeed, um, as rumors have it, yeah. we would like to congratulate uh, Mr. Samuels ahead in advance, of course, wishing him all the best in this new endeavor. Well, Jovan, based on his credential, I, I, I would say that he is probably one of the most qualified persons uh, to take on such a role as the head of the BVI Ports Authority. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I'd really like to see in the territory as it pertains to not only the head of the BVI Ports Authority, but other uh, organizations is that we see some consistency Absolutely. in the leadership, and perhaps this is the beginning of such. And the beginning of something great. Yeah. All right, viewers still ahead, another person injured in a marine accident near Guana Island and several earthquakes rocking Puerto Rico. More news when we return. Everyone looks to the future, but no one truly knows what the future holds. The number of people under the age of 20 with type 2 diabetes could increase by 49% by 2050. Let it be known that we all have a 30% chance of developing hypertension. Globally, more than 300 million people of all ages suffer from depression. More than 60,000 young adults aged 20 to 39 
are diagnosed with cancer each year. Obesity leads to problems such as stroke, heart disease, and kidney failure. No matter your race, age, or color, we are all at risk. These diseases can be managed or prevented if caught early. But with the right medicine and the right doctors to keep us on a path to live a robust and healthy life. We will live well. So you're saying I can ask this cat any question? The cat is connected to the computer. You just type in the question, it will read his mind. There's the answer, come. You're the man! I've been looking for this for weeks. Brilliant Hands and Minds Tutoring Services. One-on-one -on -one tutorials in math and English, intense homework assistance, academic enrichment, school projects, effective communication and public speaking development, sign language for adults and children on Saturdays only. Registered with the Virgin Islands High School Certificate Program, Brilliant Hands and Minds can help you too. Offering intense curriculum-based training to help you or your loved ones get their high school diploma. It's time to make your family's education a number one priority. Hurry, space is limited. Brilliant Hands and Minds Learning Center. We are the trained education professionals. Viewers, welcome back. Now on to a very sad story. The Royal Virgin Islands Police Force reported the death of 58-year-old United States citizen John LaGrasse. Mr. LaGrasse, who was vacationing in the territory, died as a result of a marine incident while snorkeling on January 3rd, 2020, near Guana Island. A female also sustained serious injuries and was transported to Dr. D. Orlando Smith Hospital for treatment. Of course, the matter is currently under investigation and their families are being kept updated on the progress of the police investigation. Investigation. Jovan, this is something we've continued to see over and over. Uh, it's like very unfortunate where a lot of our visiting uh, tourists come to the Virgin Islands to enjoy our waters and ended up, end up losing their life. Um, I'm not sure what could be done locally um, from a Visar perspective, from a re Marine perspective, from a BVI Tourist Board perspective, as well as from the perspective of the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force. But uh, in protecting our borders, we also want to protect and, under and, and make sure that all persons that are in during the water have some sort of a knowledge as to the dangers that um, they could possibly face because it's quite unfortunate. Um, the last one was Christmas Eve, I believe, yes. Christmas Eve or Christmas Day. Another uh, visitor from the United States lost their life. So we something we need to crack down on, figure out how we could uh, better assist our tourists to have a good time, enjoy themselves, and go back home safely. But be safe at the same Absolutely. time. It's very unfortunate. And two, it leaves a very negative imprint on our tourism product. And that, you know, that's not the image mm -hmm. we want to get out here. We, we remember um, how the murders, uh, I should say, the same similar situations. Yes. I should not say murder. I don't know for sure what happened. Similar situations in uh, uh, the Dominican Republic. Correct. Yes. Uh, several tourists coming to the island and dying as a result. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, mysteriously, so we don't know for sure, but it really le leaves a negative imprint yeah. on the tourism. And, and though and no really fault hard. of our own, um, mm -hmm. they're you know persons enjoying themselves. Mm -hmm. But I think more could be done, possibly on Absolutely. our end, just to to make sure aspect. that education is up there. Absolutely, moving right along, viewers. Terrible news in Puerto Rico. A 5.7 magnitude earthquake hit Puerto Rico this morning, causing some damage and power outages. The quake hit just nine miles off the coast of Guanica. Several minor landslides were reported around the island. Officials say this was the strongest quake since tremors began over a week ago. Those earthquakes have ranged in magnitude from 4.7 to 5.1 but there were no tsunami warnings issued. The 5.7 magnitude earthquake that hit Puerto Rico uh, just before dawn today unleashed small landslides and caused major, major power outages, severely cracking some homes, as you can see in the pictures here. It was one of the strongest quakes to hit the United States territory. Now, while there were no immediate reports of casualties, there were significant
permanent damages. Again, flashing across the, sea, uh, the screen, many homes damaged as a result of the quake. It was followed by a string of similar tremors, including another earthquake measured at the magnitude of 5.0 that struck later today around 10.51 this morning, shaking the power lines and, of course, frightening residents of Sutter and Puerto Rico who had been waiting outside their homes due to fears of the buildings uh, supposedly collapsing. Helicopters buzzed overhead as terrified residents jumped up from their folding chairs every time the earth shook, yelling at others to step away from the power lines. Now, few people dared to go back inside their homes, but Jose Quintanans, 54, he had no choice. His 80-year-old mother had wow. heart problems and, of course, was lying in bed. He went inside to assist his mom. Now, dozens of people in the neighborhood called uh, Hope in the southern tongue of Guanica walked around with their phones and yelled to the magnitude uh, of the latest earthquake as they tried to you know, calm the children who were forced to open their presents. And today's Street Kings mm -hmm. Day in Puerto Rico, uh, forced to open their presents uh, outside. And this is, of course, a religious holiday. Many of those same residents take into social media reporting these strong tremors. Now, as expected, uh, experts are duly concerned about what this means for the region. And after reaching out to DDM today, we were told that the BVI will be brought up to speed uh, shortly, hopefully by tomorrow, okay. on this new unfortunate uh, series of events. Now, Ron, I know whatever happens in the region is automatically connected to us, being yes. that we're within the same hurricane or I should say natural disaster region. So it's very concerning uh, when things like this happen so close to home. And, and we just we have definitely to definitely wish the people of Puerto Rico all absolutely, the best. Absolutely, absolutely. Still ahead, a weekend bar shooting leaves one injured and Iran plans to fire back as their, uh, at the U.S., of course, as their leader dies. These and more stories when to wait for news returns. Why are you really running for a bus? You could have bust a hole in your head. But well, see you with the competition. It's means you're about to bust a hole in your pocket. I could get my modem, please. Anyhow, I got something used to show you. Eh? You gotta be sick in your head. A whole on string bean. Taking a kind of party. Check this. That's LTE1 for just about everyone. LTE2 for you and your book. And hold on. Bam! Red solo, you feel like you're free. That's LTE tree for you and the whole family. Save even more on your internet with new pricing from CCT. Get LTE 2 now for only $149. Get LTE 3 for the new low price of $189. All packages are unlimited, so there's no overage charge. You don't have to run into Chaz for savings. Just stop by our store and sign up today. Come on over to CCT. Life unlimited. Hello? Wait, you had a long time to care. Did you say you were sick? What happened to our wedding rehearsal? Um, no, no, babe. I'm actually watching the news right now. Take, take, take a listen. Topping our newscast today, UFOs seen around Tortola Pier Park. And District 3 residents outraged over no water supply. They simply cannot bathe. These and more stories when 284 News returns. All right, babe, just get some rest. Take to Advil and I'll see you later. Bye. Okay, honey, i see you later. I love you. It's clear to see that Coconut Lounge is a place to be. The coolest cocktail lounge in the British Virgin Islands. A lounge like no other, with welcoming, professional service, and a breathtaking ambiance. Not forgetting a diverse selection of wines, beers, and signature cocktails. Cozy, comfortable, contemporary. Coconut Lounge at Tortola Pier Park. Visit us today. Viewers, welcome back. The Royal Virgin Islands Police Force are already having a very busy 2020. Officers of the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force are investigating a shooting that occurred in the late hours on Friday, January 3rd at Bouncers Bar, Parakeeta Bay, Tortola. A report of gunshots being fired at Bouncers Bar, Parakeeta Bay was received after 11 o'clock Friday night. Upon arrival, officers of the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force learned that one person was injured in this incident and was tr transported sorry, to the Dr. D. Orlando Smith Hospital by private vehicle, where he underwent treatment for his injuries. Persons with information into this incident are asked to contact the Rural Virgin Islands Police Force Criminal Investigations Department 
through their access number 311. Persons can also call the Rural Virgin Islands Police Force Intelligent Unit at 368-9339. All information will be held in the strictest of confidence. Very unfortunate way yes. to start the year. I know this is definitely not a trend we're mm -hmm. looking forward to in 2020. So viewers, we are imploring you. Um, in so many cases, too, we have many cases that are still unsolved. Absolutely. Persons are not necessarily coming forward. Um, you know, sometimes With you information, be they're not a, willing, yeah. a snitch. Yeah. Um, but we want to ensure that we, we keep crime under control in the British Virgin Islands. We have way too much to lose at the expense of crime. I agree. Moving right along, major developments on the international scene. Qasem Soleimani, one of Iran's most powerful and controversial figure, was killed by a U.S. airstrike ordered by President Donald Trump at the Baghdad International Airport on Friday. He was hailed uh, as a hero to Iran, brave, charismatic, and beloved by the troops and considered a living martyr of the revolution. But the United States viewed Iran's top general as a ruthless killer. He was head of the Revolutionary Guards, Quds Force, an elite unit that handles Iran's overseas operations, and one deemed to be a foreign terrorist organization by the United States. Now, as a result of the killing, the U.S. and Iran are on heightened alert after a weekend of military action. So here's how it unfolded. Days after President Trump ordered a drone strike that killed uh, Mr. Kissam, the powerful commander of Iran's elite Quds force, the U.S. is bracing for possible retaliatory actions by Iran. Now, before the strike, the U.S. had been pushed to the brink of retaliation against Iran or its proxies on multiple occasions, specifically after attacks last summer on oil tankers in the Persian Gulf and oil facilities in Saudi Arabia and Iran's downing of a U.S. drone in June. Now, over the past few weeks, a number of things have happened. Troubling, some might say. On December 27th, a rocket attack believed to be linked to the Shilat militia group backed by Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps killed a U.S. civilian contractor and wounded several U.S. and Iran Iraq military personnel on a base near Iraq. On December 29, U.S. forces fired back and conducted airstrikes at five facilities in Iraq and Syria controlled by a Shiite military group known as Khatib Hezbollah, the group that American officials blamed for the attack of the base near Kirkuk. Now, on December 31st, pro-Iranian protesters demonstrating against the American airstrikes attacked the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad, uh, scaling walls and forcing the gates open. On January 3rd, President Trump ordered a precision drone strike at the Baghdad airport to, quote, terminate Soleimani, a top Iranian commander who was plotting, quote, imminent and sinister attacks on Americans, diplomats, and military personnel. Now, others were killed in that attack, of course. Now, fast forward to January 4th. Iran vowed a retaliation against the U.S. in response to the strike. If Iran targets any Americans or American assets, Trump said he would sanction specific military strikes against Iranian cultural sites, which could, of course, amount mm -hmm. to a war crime. Now, that's the major concern we've had over the last yes. couple of days. Uh, Trump made these claims public as he tweeted, and I quote, as you can see on the screen, targeted 52 Iranian sites representing 52 American hostages taken by Iran many years ago, some at a very high level and important to Iran and the Iranian culture and those targets and Iran itself will be hit fast, very fast, and very hard. The U.S. wants no more threats, end of quote. Now, on January 5th, Soleimani's body arrived in his own country where thousands run, and yes. you could see stretch for miles. They were mourning, screaming, crying, um, as, of course, mourning the death of their leader. Meanwhile, uh, Jen Hossein, the military advisor to Iran's supreme leader, told CNN in an exclusive interview that Tehran would retaliate directly against U.S. military sites. Now, Ron, very wow. dangerous uh, development and on we, the international And we absolutely scene. have to keep uh, close because one of the things that a lot of persons fail to understand is uh, as simple as we might take it, a lot of these uh, events and a lot of these happenings do affect us here They're in the Virgin Islands. Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Um, and apart from the fear that it's... Uh, uh, put into the lives of many, especially in the United States, I think it is uh, imperative that we pay close attention to it, which we will be doing.
We have to. The, the British Virgin Islands is, uh, in, like I said, interdependent. Mm -hmm. uh, we trade with the United States. Uh, about 80 to 90 percent of our yes. imports come from the United States. A big chunk of our tourists are from that region as well. So we have to be duly concerned. And, you know, I was watching an interview uh, that Oprah did years ago with President Barack Obama and yes. his wife, Michelle Obama. And, you know, he made a comment at that time, it, probably around 2011, saying America is at the most dangerous times it's ever seen. Mm -hmm. And she was was like you know we've had worse times we've had hmm. the wars and stuff why would you say that he said because now our world is so interconnected absolutely so you know our problems now belong to them and yeah. their problem belongs belong to, to us, us. Yeah. so we have to make sure we're paying attention to it things on the international scene. Indeed. Uh, similarly with, with the United Kingdom, what's happening there, it eventually trickles down to Most the British definitely. Virgin Islands. So that's just it. Yeah, and how was your weekend? It was good. Awesome. That's yeah. a good switch. Yeah, I like that. Hey, we just <laughs> came out of, we just came out of a, a, a short weekend, yeah, but it it's Monday good. and we're back to work. So. I actually had a long weekend yeah. because I wasn't so well on Friday, but recovered well over the weekend. Um, I didn't realize I could clean this well. Like I was in all the cl there you go. The, the corners and the crevices. <laughs> I'm like, we're gonna get these. There's things. someone once said, a weekend well spent brings a week of, of content. content. I fully agree yeah. with that. I so fully we agree encourage with that. persons to enjoy their weekend, and we know teachers and students are back to school today. So we want to wish uh, all our students and teachers, as well as ministry officials, a wonderful, wonderful uh, semester or mm -hmm. term, as they as we, as we call it here. Uh, much success, uh, great grades, and we want to make sure that our students are safe enjoying uh, their academic uh, process yes. as well as making sure that they're bringing home uh, really, really good grades. I know the minister as well as ministry officials, uh, this is not an easy task, mm. educating the, the, the people and the future generation of our territory. So we want to support our students. We want to, uh, when we see them, give them encouragement, make sure that they're motivated and they're safe, uh, and just, you know, give them a word of advice as you see them. Mm -hmm. and, and and really embrace the old adage that says it takes a village. A Absolutely. lot of times we can be a lot more helpful and, yeah. as, and assist persons. I know a lot of, you know, parents work, you know, a, a cousin can step in, an uncle and aunt could step in and just make sure and ensure our students are doing their best and ensure that they have the, the necessary resources. Yeah. Um, that they need. So overall, just best wishes for the term, again, to all our students. And teachers, yes. As well as the Ministry of Education, of course, all those supporting the process of education. Viewers, as usual, it's a pleasure. Indeed. And we just have to go ahead and wrap things up. Uh, that is it for today's news roundup. But again, if you're yet to, we have a lot of information on Facebook, uh, 284 Media. Please go follow us. We have 284BVI on Instagram as well as yes. Twitter. We're also on YouTube. If you're like me, you like to binge watch, go follow us on YouTube at 284 Media. My name is Javon Wilson. And I'm Ron Grant. We'll see you again tomorrow as we deliver your daily dose of local, regional, and international content. 284 News, your source for honest and impartial. We're not going to... 2020, we sticking with the honest and impartial. You yes, guys are we're not going to switch it up. Yeah, you're going to get it raw. <laughs> so join us again tomorrow. Happy Monday, everybody. It's been said, sticks and stones may break bones, but words don't hurt me. That cannot be further from the truth. Everything you say and do creates an impact. Whether you're 13 or 30, 6 or 60, your actions and words carry weight. They either lift someone up or tear them down. One in five students ages 12 to 18 has been bullied during the school year. Approximately 160 teens have skipped school because of bullying. The most commonly reported types of bullying are verbal harassment, social harassment, physical bullying, and cyberbullying. Remember, everyone you meet is fighting a battle you know nothing about, and bullying is never okay, whether it's in a classroom or a corporation. 284 Media joins the Ministry of Education of the Government of the Virgin Islands in the fight against bullying. When you see it or hear it, speak up against it. Let's end bullying. When you need to stay connected with friends and families at home or abroad, the best choice for you is Frida. CCT Frida. With the lowest rates in the market, our Freedom Plan gives you unlimited calls and texting. Plus, our Freedom One package includes 10 gigabits of super fast unlimited LTE data and 
Unlimited calls to the BVI, USA, USVI, Canada, Puerto Rico, and UK lines. Why pay for overages when you can enjoy CCT Freedom? Stop by at one of our stores today and speak with one of our representatives to find out more about our CCT Freedom packages.